Hello, my friends. This is your happy Stanford lady, Rachel Markin, helping the creative you shine through. Welcome to week three of July Under the Sea. I'm super excited to share the technique I have with you today. It's new. I It's new to me. I think it's been around a while, but it's new to me, so I'm super excited. So let me go to my Facebook page real quick and show you my website. So remember... On my Facebook page, if you subscribe to YouTube, thank you very much. I also would love it if you would go and like my Facebook page because I'm more interactive here. And I always show like extra cards and different, you know, different goodies like that. So I'd love you to be on both. This is my demonstrator page and you can order at any time. And also remember that I will gladly help you put an order in. Hello, my friends. So first of all, I am feeling much better. Um, it gets better every day. I am learning how to pace myself. That is important. Take a little downtime. I'm not great at it. I'm not going to lie, but I certainly am trying. I certainly am trying. So a couple of things as we talk about ordering, I wanted to show you. <laughs> this is all I can show you right now. This is the holiday catalog. Okay, starts August 4th that you can order through December 2020, the mini holiday catalog. This is all I can show you right now. Be watching super, super exciting things coming along in, uh, you know, in the next several months. But I think it's really fun that they come out with this because, you know, some people do Christmas in July. And if you're like me and you have a lot of projects, I do enjoy like kind of getting a head start. So just a little sneak peek. I can't show you anything else, but get to get you excited. Okay. So you see up in um, the notebook up there, it's called Joseph's Coat Technique is what we're going to do today. I am actually really, really excited. I do believe that... Um, this is probably an older technique. Sometimes I'll be going through uh, just to get, you know, like just to get different ideas and stuff. And when I do that, I like to come up with some techniques that I have never done before. I have actually never done this technique before. I was trying to find, and of course I cannot whenever I'm looking for it. What a goober. Um, I was trying to find our embossing powder and embossing gun because that's what we're going to be using today, which is different than stuff we used before. Okay. So of course I can't find it when I want to show you in the catalog. So today is over the moon, which means I get to use anything I want in the catalog. And today we're going to really do a lot of embossing and I'm super excited to show you that. So who's ready for magic box? Okay. Today is going to be super, super fun. Now, first of all, you're going to notice that I changed out my colors. It is important to have brighter colors. I did try it with the colors that I've been using in um, Simply Fantastic and Anna Dasha Glitter, but they weren't bright enough to be the look that we needed. So you'll notice that the colors are different today. So we have dimensionals. We'll be using those later today. And we always have our bone folder, of course, and we have our paper snips. I like to have my pick a tool um, just in case I need to use that for anything. Of course, I'm going to have my glue. I always have my glue. Okay, and got some paper. We'll be using all that today. We're going to use the chalk marker again. I did use the chalk marker in, I think it was Playful Pets in June, I think. I've got a couple blocks. I always have my blocks. So I'm going to go over my colors here momentarily. Um, of course, this is our stamp set. Well done. And we've been using this all month long. I am loving this stamp set. And I will say once again, if you don't have it, what are you waiting for? Another announcement is, is that in July, I've been a little behind because I hadn't been feeling good, but it's bonus days in July. So if you order $50 for every $50 you order, you get $5 coupons to spend in August and the new catalog's coming out. Who doesn't want some extra spending cash, right? So you could order all the well done stuff and then have spending cash for 
the month of August. Okay, you're seeing some bright colors, bright colors. I'm not going to reveal all to you. I'm just going to put that over to the side. Okay, Willy Punch once again because the Whale Punch is marvelous. And of course, we've got Magic Box up to. We've got our DSP. Um, and we're not really going to use this today, although I'm going to show you an option to do if the embossing technique is not for you. I'm going to show you how you can use DSP instead. Okay, let's talk about our colors. Magenta Madness, Granny Apple Green, Bermuda Bay, and Night of Navy. Okay, those are different colors, but you need the brightness for this particular technique. It's very, very important. So if you don't have these colors, what am I always gonna tell you? Find your own voice. If you, you know, I understand budgets. If you can't order everything that I'm using, I want you to be able to do the techniques though. I want you to have fun with the products that you have. And that's why I'm trying to always find different techniques that you can incorporate with things you already own, things you might already have. Okay. Stuff that is not normally in the magic box. I had it over here because um, I had used the gun earlier and it was hot. We have the heat gun. Stampin' Up! sells a heat gun. I'm sure you can find them other places as well, but Stampin' Up! is $30. The heat gun is lovely and it's for embossing. So if you're someone who starts to get into the techniques that I'm showing you like in Over the Moon, I will gladly help you put the products together. Okay. Clear embossing powder is what we're using today. I know it looks white when you're looking at it here, but it is actually clear embossing powder. And the Versamark stamp pad is a must for what we're embossing today. Now, I have the embossing buddy and I use it all the time. I'm honestly not sure why Stampin' Up! got rid of it. I use it all the time when I emboss. So, um, I'm going to continue to use that and you, hopefully you can find it somewhere else. I do apologize for that inconvenience. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over our measurements. We're going to look on our notebook. And we're going to talk about our measurements and then we're going to go into how to put the card together. I'm going to do steps for you today so you don't have to watch me do every single thing. I'm going to show you like, okay, here's a step and then this is what it looks like. So it'll be easier. So I want it to be super, super long video for you. Okay. So Jacob's Coat Technique, card base. I can show you that because I have a blank one. I do not want to reveal until we're done. So the card base that we're using, we're using the Magenta Madness cardstock. Okay. You notice that you have two different options. You can either do, I'll show it this way so you can't see it. You can do the 11 and a half. I don't want you to see the inside. The 11 and a half, I'm, I'm doing it 11 and a half long way by four and a four, scored at five and a half. That's a card base. Or you can do the eight and a half by five and a half scored up four and a fourth. Okay. Those are your options. You can do them either way. And so when we start getting into the strips that we're cutting, you look, there are different sizes. If you choose to go the um, vertical way or the horizontal way, but it's all up there. So you have all the strips, you have all the sizes. Both of your inside white panels are five and a fourth by four inches. Okay. So that's very simple. Okay. So for the front panel, the main image panel, you start with Let's see, you start with five inches by three and three fourths inches. Or you start with four and three fourths by four inches. And again, that's going to depend on am I doing it? Am I doing the vertical card or am I doing the horizontal or am I doing some of both, which is what I did. I ended up doing some both directions just because I thought it was super fun. I liked it. I like doing it that way. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to bring these out so you can see them fully done. I am going to show you how to 
color the paper because that's what we're doing first we are actually coloring paper today isn't that fun and so i'm checking my measurements real quick to make sure i tell you which one i'm using on here i had already pre-cut my paper so um i'm using the five inches By the three and three fourths inches okay so that's the panel i'm going to use and i'm going to show you how to start coloring and then i'm like here's one and here's one done because it has to be dry before the next step so you also need they were not in my magic box because they're messy and i don't want them to get on my paper these are um, sponge daubers. We sell them, you get five in a package, and then I used one for each of the colors. Now, um, Kyla Bertucci on her site has, a, like, she made a um, sponge dauber storage unit. I thought that was super cool. And um, how you could organize them. And then she has a dauber for every one of her colors. Completely brilliant and <laughs> organized. Way to go, Kylie. I am not. Mine are kind of over in the side. And I'm not there yet. I haven't done that yet. So I open all my colors so I have them ready. Because remember, the strips are there. And the So Now What stamp pads, I show you how to put the little strip on there so you know what your colors are so you start with your piece of paper you do want to have something underneath you did you notice my um new little um paper like to get messy paper like your grid paper that you get messy on this is new and you guys can order this too it's available to you guys as well it's all the in colors isn't that super fun i thought that was fun okay so what you do with the dauber is you start with an ink it doesn't matter which one and i basically did it in three sections so i like and this is you want this to be like really inky so don't feel like you're wasting ink if you're doing it and you go back over it and you're like really really getting it inky do you see like how dark that is you want that like that's what you're going for super super inky okay do you see how that looks like that then you do your next color and it looks like that okay so then i added some blue i'm gonna go back over that even you add a little bit more of that blue and then I'm going to add my last color. I'm going to kind of fill in the blanks. Okay. Three colors seems to be best. I feel like I tried um, more than three and it starts to get muddy. So I think three colors, three bright colors that you would choose are your best options. Now see how I'm filling in the holes and you want it to be very very saturated with the ink like you don't want it to look like see how you can kind of see some spots there you're going to want to go back over that and really really fill it in okay now the thing that you do with that is because you know i do assembly line so then i do all my papers and then you set them to the side to dry well this is not what i'm talking overnight dry we're talking I don't know, go get a snack or cut cut your card stock that you want or whatever and then come back to it. It's not, not like dry, you know, forever. But you want it dry enough that you can do the next steps, okay? So that is what we're going to do. We're going to put the color away for now. Now we are, um, are going to stamp inside our card. So we're going to have those colors. We're going to come back to our lovely ink here momentarily. But... For now, we're going to put that to the side. So we are done with our daubers, though. So they can go to the side, or if you get organized, they can go in your storage and do, like, nice storage. Okay, so then this one is done. Okay, so you now you have your colors, and you are totally done. Now we're going to get into embossing, and we're going to create a scene with embossing super super cool so this is where you need your stamps now what i do 
when I was embossing is I actually lay my stamps out so that I could be ready to choose what I wanted to make my scene, okay? So what we're gonna do for this one is we're gonna decide, first of all, you decide, am I doing a horizontal or am I doing a vertical card? That is important because it'll depend on which way you put your stamps down, okay? I think for this scene, we will do a horizontal. I think we'll do a horizontal. I'm gonna go ahead, because we're stamping, let's get our stamp artist. You were like, oh, Rachel, where's your stamp artist? No fear, no fear. My friend is always right there in the corner of my desk, always. My, my uh, stamp artist is always there. Okay, so what I noticed for me when I was creating the scene, the first thing I always chose was the seagrass because I loved the image that the seagrass made. Now, we're going to come to this Versamark stamp pad. I'm not sure. I know that I showed you how to do a little bit of embossing in June. Um, I think fern jars maybe I did, but now I'm gonna show you like full fledge. we're gonna do this, okay? So Versamark is a must if you're gonna emboss. Like you have to have the Versamark. So we've got our Versamark. Now here's where the embossing buddy comes in. And all you're doing is wiping off because you might have fingerprints or sticky stuff. It just is cleaning the surface of your paper. That's all that it's doing, okay? And that can go over to the side. Now, with this seagrass, I am going to stamp. You're probably not gonna see it very well until I do the magic with it. So I'm gonna start up in the corner. Yeah, you can't really see it. I was looking in the camera. As I stamp, I'm coming across and I am literally, I can see it enough. So like when I'm looking at it, yeah, you can't really tell. You will, you wait, you'll be like, oh my gosh, that is absolutely magical. It really is magical. Okay, so I have used my seagrass and I've gone all the way across. Now this might show up a little bit more once we dump our powder on there. I have a little tray. You can, I'm trying to see, I, you can see it. It reflects a little bit. Do you see the reflection? There you go, there you go. Do you see it? You see that? Okay, that is gonna get powder. All right, now you certainly can just use a piece of paper for this too. This um, tray I've had for years and years. Okay, now you can see it for a moment. Do you see all of that seagrass? Okay, this is gonna be loud for just a minute. I'm gonna use the heat gun and I'm going to heat it. I don't know how well it's gonna show in the video. We will see, we will see if you can see it. I'm gonna heat it and you will watch it dry. It will totally dry on its own. The heat gun, it only takes moments. Now I will tell you, the heat gun runs very hot. This is definitely a tool you want to be careful with. If you have small children, this is not the tool for them because you can burn yourself. I normally let my paper sit down on a surface and I don't try to hold it because I have burnt my hand before. Not comfortable. And you will watch it dry on itself. Now, I'm going to hold it up. Okay, you can see, you see that clear? You see that clear? Okay, and that is your embossing. Now that doesn't seem impressive, I'm aware. Wait until you see the technique. Okay, so what I did, because I don't want you to have to watch me emboss, emboss, emboss. I'm gonna put my Versamark away, my embossing buddy's away, my gun's over to the side, and then I dump my powder back in the jar. 
this powder will last forever. Not forever, but for a very, very long time. Because you dump powder, and you're like, oh, you dumped a lot of powder, but you put most of that goes back in the jar. As you can see, I kind of filled my jar back up. Okay, and I put the lid on that and get that over to the side. Okay, now, what I would continue to do is I would pick other stamps and then do the next stamp. So say some seahorses, powder, gun, turtle, powder, gun. Do you see what I'm saying? But I don't want you to have to watch me like do a whole scene because I already created a scene now you can see oh yeah you can there's a turtle seahorse little fishies the grass okay so that's what i did with this paper <laughs> now the magic now the jacob's coat technique magic so i am going to put my seagrass over here and put this over to the side momentarily okay because now we're going to do something super magical. This is where your dark stamp pack comes in. I chose Night of Navy and it worked perfectly. The videos that I was watching, I noticed people either chose um, espresso or black, but Night of Navy is dark enough, in my opinion, that I thought it worked like magical with the colors that I use. So, these are brayers. We have these in our catalog as well. And the brayer comes with replaceable sponges. Um, but if you keep rolling and wipe the ink off of this, you can use it in other colors. So I have used this brayer a lot. I haven't even had to use my replacement. I think you get two replacement sponges and you get two brayers quite the deal. I think it's less than $10 too. So super, super good deal. Now I did, um, I don't need to do it again, but I did re-ink it. So when you see in the catalog that there are um, ink refills, that's what these are. They come in a bottle. I did re-ink it because I wanted it super, super juicy. I wanted like a lot of ink in order to do this particular technique, okay? So, you are going to take your roller and you are roll pick up, roll pick up, roll pick up. So it covers the whole wheel. Are you ready? This is really, really magical. Oh, I don't want it on my thing. Now I'm gonna move that. Now I just want it down here. Here we go. We're going to roll. Are you seeing? What is happening? Oh my gosh. So Joseph's coat of many colors is the story in the Bible of Joseph and his coat of many colors. And look at what you have happening here when we are rolling. You are going to saturate this cardstock with the dark color, whatever that dark color may be. If you choose to use black or brown, that is totally acceptable as well. But you seriously want to saturate the cardstock because the more you do that, the more... <laughs> these gorgeous bright colors shine through oh my gosh are you in awe um i saw the technique on um youtube of course that's where the technique is at called it's called joseph's or um i wrote jacob on the thing it is actually joseph's coat of many colors. So pardon my faux pas as I, I look, just looked up there and read that. Um, you can look it up and you will find it all over. Now, you just need from your kitchen, you need a paper towel because the ink has soaked, okay? So you have soaked the ink in there then what you want to do is where you emboss, obviously you can see it, but if you take that paper towel and you rub it, it takes any ink that was on the um, 
embossed parts. Oh my gosh, is that not magical? I absolutely fell in love. And when I saw the technique, all I could think about was how beautiful that would be on the whaley whaleys. Like the sea life with that gorgeous colors, it's astounding. Okay, so what does that mean once you um, do your technique? What does that mean? Sorry, I was trying to get all my pieces. I put them over here because I was hiding them from you. <laughs> So you have pieces done, okay? And so I wanted to show you different scenes, okay? Like, look, I used the jellyfish in this one. And then um, I peeked a seahorse. I did the grass. Okay, so this is horizontal, horizontal. Sorry, this is vertical. So now we're going to do the paneling technique. And I did the paneling technique back in May when I was doing um, the looking up card kit. And so now that's what we're gonna do to finish these cards off. So let's review the strips, okay? So we did the main image panel is this. You're gonna cut three strips at four and three fourths by one and an eighth out of your main panel. You're gonna cut white strips at four and three fourths by, I'm sorry, white strips five inches by one and a fourth. These are five inches by one and a fourth. And these strips are four and three fourths by one and an eighth, okay? Then if you want to go the other direction, we want to go horizontally, we are going to cut our panels at, let's see, our white panels at four inches by one inch, but you have to cut five of them, okay? So horizontally, you cut three of them, um, Good heavens, vertically you cut three, horizontally you cut five, okay? So I'm gonna attach this one to show you what an image looks like on there on a panel. And then we're gonna put one together for our horizontal card. So I am loving how this turned out because you literally cut your image and then you put it back together. That's the only thing you kind of do. Me want to pay attention because see like my fish go together, my jellyfish go together there. That's what you're looking for. Okay. And then you have your white strip inside. Simple, super simple. Okay. So for the horizontal card, you have five strips. And what that means is we are going to lay our strips down first. So I turn it sideways just so I can see it. I am not leaving very much. I'm leaving a small space and I try to keep it even there. And then I turn it the other direction. Now remember, this is how I lay my strips because I feel like it helps me to um, get my strips evenly. But that does not mean you have to lay them that way. If you want to just keep laying your strips down in one direction, you may certainly do that. Um, this just kind of helps me. I'm just kind of how I do it. So I'm laying my strips down for my panel painting, which is what that is. But the main thing that I wanted to show you was the Joseph's Coat technique because I think that it is stellar with this particular stamp set. I thought that the Whale Done stamp set just was screaming for these colors. Don't the colors remind you? I am totally like going back to 80s. I'm going back to my high school days um, with all the like, it feels like neon colors. This is not fun. Okay. And so that's what it looks like strips going this way. You've got five strips going this way. Now let's cut one of our pieces so that we can 
finish our card. So these pieces, okay, this is already, you already have the main image on this at, um, three and three fours going this way. So you're just going to cut it at three fourths inches. So I go over here and I cut and I have to cut five strips at three fourths inches. And so I literally just cut one right after the other because I want to maintain uh, my picture. I want to maintain my image. So I don't want to cut randomly. I want to cut them so that I can see my image. And do I have five? I do indeed. I have five. And then you're left over with a little bit, which I put inside. You know how I like to do that. So then we come over here and we finish our image. So we've got, yeah, I messed up. I got my little turtle there. There we go. Got my little jellyfish. And I got my coral. There we go. And we're going to put those together. And then we've created our panel painting with our Joseph's technique. Is that not amazing? I, when I saw that done, I was like, oh my gosh, that is kind of like mermaid magical. <laughs> you know how I love the sparkle. You know how I love the wow factor. This definitely has all of the above for me. I was very, very impressed with um, how that came together. I saw someone do one for the fall. They did like fall leaves. That was pretty magical too. So I, So there's like many, many possibilities with this particular technique. You just, uh, you're only limited by, what do I always say? Your imagination, right? Because that is pretty great. Okay, so we have this together and then we just get to play, okay? So let me put this one down. And then I couldn't resist bringing back in the whaleys. <laughs> with the whale punch because you know how I feel about the whale punch okay but look at that like that that already is like super magical like super super great and I think you could just put this inside and you wouldn't have to do anything else you know that you wouldn't have to do anything else but I'm going to show you what you could add okay so you have that done super great but you could come back with the punch, right? We've got our whaley punch, and I um, can lift it today <laughs> and punch it out. So when I am doing my punches, you know I punch a whole bunch at one time, right? And I wanted to show you what all punches out. This is the whale, then this is the tummy and the spout. I guess you can do another little arm on him, but I didn't like it, so I don't I don't put that on there. And so I have a whole bunch of those whaleys and, you know, whatever, all those pieces. I keep all those, like, in a baggie. I have a whole bunch of those to choose from. And then I had already punched ahead of time. Uh, you're kind of a big deal. And my love for you is uh, bigger than the ocean. And I cut those out. Because, you know, I had showed you that in the beginning video. So I have, like, a whole bunch of those already done. And I had cut out some little, out of the paper, I had cut some whaleys. I had cut some pieces out. How fun is that? So let's take a whaley. Let's take a white whaley this time. Isn't he fun? And let's give him a belly. I don't know. That belly kind of makes him, I don't know, kind of gives him a fun, I think, gives him a, finishes his look. And then let's take the Bermuda Bay. I liked that one. And you know that little dot, you know I'm going to tell you to use that little dot on there. Hello, where did I put my stamps? Are you seeing this? Like I'm like, um, and where did I throw my stamps? Okay, I will 
to show you because I have no idea where I just threw my stamps at. <laughs> Good gravy. Rachel Markin, you crazy. So this is what you get because uh, you don't want to watch me look for stamps. I did the white whale. Okay, gave him his belly, gave him his eyeball, gave him his little dots from the thing, gave him some um, like water spout. Then you're the kind of the big deal. And I did use dimensionals on these, but doesn't that, I mean, I you could totally get away with it like this and love and and i love it but there is something a little bit magical about that i just think it adds just gives it a little just gives it a little something right and you could leave it like this like we talked about or you know me you know me you could stamp in it so i did the seagrass and the dots and a baby whale and i added my words and i even did seagrass and dots up here but i didn't i mean those are just stamped in there i didn't want to like take forever to uh do the video so i just wanted to show you that i did white whales this time so i just did the punch with the white and then with my design paper, how I punched out whales, I had little bellies and I had little, you know, spouts or whatever. And these are hand cut. So whenever I do the words like that, I just hand cut them with my snips. I just kind of cut around them. No, you know, no biggie. And I do add the eyeball. I don't know if you remember me saying that, but I go in and I add the eyeball. Okay, and the last thing I did, and I wanted to show you that. Do you see that? And you see the difference here? I took the um, chalk, the Stampin' Chalk marker, and I did dots. I don't know. I thought that it, like, suddenly added something. Look at that on that side compared to this over here. I thought the dots just really made it stand out. I don't know why I like groups of three, but I do like groups of three. Look at the difference in that. Isn't that so attractive? And you all, you have bubbles in the water. So, you know, go give yourself some bubbles. That's what we're doing is giving it some bubbles. Isn't that adorable? Okay. So this is the Joseph's coat, <laughs> not the Jacob coat. Hello, Rachel. Maybe you should know your Bible. <laughs> I do. I just totally messed that up. The Jacob's coat, uh, the Joseph's coat of many colors. Look, I said it again. Now, I told you if you didn't want to do um, Joseph's coat of many colors, you certainly could do the paper. This is the design paper cut in the same strips, cut with the same way. I did a pink whaley whaley. Isn't that super cute? Right? And he needs a spouter on him to complete him. So if it, you know, if you were, um, you had stuff, but you were like, yeah, I can't do that. You certainly could create the same technique. You could certainly create the same fun look. You need to, you're kind of a big deal um, with the dimensionals. And you would have the card. It's just a different. And because we're over the moon today, I went over the moon. I used like mega things, super fun things that you can do. But remember that you can take what I'm doing. You can take the things that I'm creating and you can do a different version. I mean, look how cute that is. He's super, super adorable with the... Um, yeah, and then you could do the inside with the paper and stamp, right? You could do all of your fun little guys with your stamps because you have that. You have your stamps and your paper, right? Super, super fun. Okay, let's go back to the front screen. Well, first of all, I want to 
thank you guys for continuing to check on me. I am uh, continually getting better all the time and learning to pace myself. I'm super excited. The paper pumpkin has already arrived at my door. So got lots of lots of fun things. Um, I will always be doing an alternative to the paper pumpkin. So watch for that. Watch what I kind of turn that on its ear. And I think I'm going to try to use the whaley uh, suite at least for a little bit of the paper pumpkin because I'm so in love with this whale suite. So until we meet again, my friends, go and make the world a better place. Find ways to love on people and care about people. And I bid you adieu.